morning. Glad you could join us. Not what you want to be dealing uh, with on a Monday, but Mobile 11 is out in St. Paul checking for slick spots on the roads. At least that road looks like it's in A1 condition. Right. You've got to check those uh, overpasses and bridge, so, but you can think these record breaking lows we've been seeing. <laughs> yeah, guy, yesterday uh, I did not get out of the house at yeah, all <laughs> as the snow was falling. Snow was coming down like all day, yeah. too. Uh, some areas picked up about three inches of snow, as you can see right here. Uh, and you can see roads mainly around the metro look fine. It's just those isolated uh, slippery stretches that we're watching, especially over on bridges and overpasses. But yeah, take a look at the snow total. So again, uh, from this, you may run into a few isolated slick spots this morning. Temperatures are in the mid 20s, feels like 16, and it's going to feel like the teens uh, all day. We'll see highs today in the 30s, but uh, again, teens and 20s, those are the temperatures you're going to want to dress for. Waking up to a little bit of sunshine too mid morning. And a look at the road set. So keep an eye on this crash out of Oakdale, 694 eastbound. A few cars uh, deep in the ditch, kind of hard to see, but you can see it blocking that right shoulder. And a few people were out with some flashlights. This is near 15th Street North, again in the Oakdale area. So if this uh, is your route, you might want to give yourself a few extra minutes. It wasn't causing any slowdowns along 694 just yet, but it is something I'm keeping my eye on. Also, police are still investigating after a crash happened involving uh, an ambulance earlier today. It happened about an hour ago near 27th and Park. You can see the front end of this ambulance completely smashed. No word on any injuries there. Well, developing this morning, we're learning one person is dead after an apartment fire in Invergrove Heights. Gordon Severson joins us live right now outside the building where neighbors are shaken up this morning. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, uh, this is where the fire happened here in the 3800 block of Conroy Trail East. It happened in this condo here behind me. This is where firefighters were called. You might be able to see the window here is boarded up. The 911 caller told them that a person was trapped inside this building. When firefighters got here, they immediately started spraying water on the fire to try to control it. The fire chief says that it took them several minutes to get the situation under control, so it was safe enough for firefighters to go inside. When they did go in, they found a deceased person inside the building. Now firefighters aren't releasing the person's name, age or gender at this time. Neighbors who saw the fire say that without this quick response, the fire easily could have spread to other buildings. I, I mean, I, I, I read across the street. I looked up. I said, geez, this is this is really bad because I, as you can see, all, all these condomi uh, condominiums houses, I mean, are all together. And, and, and like where I live, there's like th three attached. So it's like something happened in my complex. Everything could start at the same time. Now, many of these buildings are just a few feet uh, separating them. You can see these garages here. They're just a few feet between them and just a few feet from the condo here that caught fire. So it easily could have spread to these other buildings. But the fire chief says that they were able to contain this fire to just one building here. Now, they say that no one else was hurt in this fire. And right now, this morning, they are trying to figure out, do an investigation to try to figure out how this fire started. Back to you. Understandable how a lot of people in that neighborhood are shaken this morning. Yeah. Thanks, Gordon. Also breaking overnight, we're working to find out what police were investigating in the near north neighborhood early this morning. You can see they had the 1700 block of Emerson Avenue here taped off with their flashlights out. We will update you as soon as we learn more. Big developments overnight in the fight against the coronavirus. Let's get you caught up on the three things you need to know. Show us you care. That's a message from teachers in the Anoka Hennepin School District. They're demanding the district restore teachers hazard pay, along with safer student to staff ratios for child care workers. They plan on picketing this afternoon outside Justice Page Middle School and Northeast Middle School. That's happening during what could be a very contentious meeting tonight between parents and district officials. They'll be talking about moving to distance learning for middle and high school students next week, ending sports and extracurriculars in the district. And in a matter of hours, negotiations begin for one day only between Metro Transit and the Metro Council. Workers want fair contracts with more money for drivers during the pandemic. Last month, the union authorized a strike after rejecting an offer for a one-time HEROES payment. That strike could start today if a deal doesn't get done. 
And Chris, we're taking a look at the cases both in Minnesota and Wisconsin when it comes to COVID. They both remain high, but let's start with Minnesota. MDH reported more than 2200 new cases on Saturday and then Sunday 1700. So those are the blue bars that you're seeing right here. That two week average we've been showing you is now about 1500 new cases per day and deaths also high in Minnesota. 21 more people reported yesterday to have died 35 over the weekend in Wisconsin. Let's take a look at that. More than 4000 new cases Saturday, more than 3600 on Sunday. And when we look at that two week average, it does not look good. It's getting closer to that 4000 mark. That means 4000 cases per day. And all of this concerning, of course, as Halloween is this weekend and the election is just eight days away. And there's more free testing sites that are opening this weekend. Tyler, Madison, Waconia, Little Falls and Red Wing. For more locations on where you can get a saliva test, text the word test to 763-797-7215. Developing this morning, as COVID spreads across the country, there's a new hot spot. It's at the White House. We're learning at least five associates of Vice President Mike Pence are COVID positive. That includes his chief of staff. But the vice president tested negative and isn't staying home. He's traveling to Hibbing, Minnesota today for a rally. Officials are calling him an essential worker like doctors and nurses. It comes only weeks after the president himself and members of the first family tested positive. And Alicia, as if the president didn't have enough on his plate, he's also dealing from the follow from that heated 60 Minutes interview last night. Yeah, it aired last night. It was highly anticipated as uh, the president talked about it so much last week, and he promised in this tweet last week that the president released the raw interview online before it aired on the network last night. Now, in his tweet, the president writes, look at the bias, hatred, and rudeness on behalf of 60 Minutes and CBS. The raw footage shows a somewhat awkward exchange between CBS reporter Leslie Stoll and President Trump after she asks him if he's ready for some tough questions. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for fairness. You're going to get fairness, but you're okay with some kind of questions. You're not okay with tough questions. Well, to be fair, you, you don't ask Biden tough questions. Me? Huh? I don't need It's terrible. I don't it's terrible. And that was the very beginning of the interview when the president sat down and it ended abruptly 38 minutes later with the president saying essentially the same thing that he wasn't a fan of the tough questions and the network gave Joe Biden quote softballs. Now Leslie Stahl also interviewed Vice President Mike Pence right after Trump walked out of the interview asking him what happened. The VP responding that the president is a man who speaks his mind. The interview with Trump and Pence focused heavily on the ongoing pandemic and the economy moving forward, with Trump saying that he created the greatest economy in the history of the United States. Now, 60 Minutes also sat down with former Vice President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to talk about their plan moving forward, asking similar questions as they did to President Trump about the coronavirus, their health care plans, foreign affairs, and the economy. Now, 60 Minutes posted their interviews with both President Trump and Joe Biden, along with a complete transcript of what each candidate said for complete transparency. But after, uh, you know, watching both interviews, mm -hmm. you guys, they did ask a lot of the same questions for each candidate. So, I mean, I thought it was fair. Right. I don't know. And you can watch it for yourself right yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think you'd probably assume tough questions are coming if you're the president, right. too. Exactly. I don't know if you have to, like, preface the interview with that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Alicia. Alicia. Well, thank you live now from our nation's capital, where Amy Coney Barrett is one step away from becoming a Supreme Court justice. Today, the U.S. Senate is holding its final vote to confirm Barrett. Yesterday, Senate Republicans voted 51 to 48 to advance her nomination to the full Senate. The final vote is expected to begin after 730 tonight. Let's get to Guy now with our One Thing Weather. Yeah, temperatures this morning uh, will be in the 20s by 8 a.m. Partly cloudy skies, then we'll see more sunshine during the afternoon. Winds northwest, 8 to 20 miles per hour, uh, could make it feel like the teens. And roads could be slick in certain spots around the Twin Cities metro. We did have a few early on crashes. A car way deep in the ditch. A tow truck, though, just got to the scene. This is 694 eastbound near 15th Street in Oakdale. Well, we are now 10 days until final votes are cast with the presidential race dominating the headlines this morning. We're focusing on the key issues here locally. I think we're eight days away, actually. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. It's <laughs> next Tuesday. This morning, John Croman profiles a race in a West Metro suburban district that in 2018 elected a Democrat for the first time in decades. In the third congressional district of the Twin Cities Western suburbs, the race pits incumbent freshman Democrat Dean Phillips against political newcomer Republican Kendall Qualls. 
someone, someone shared with me earlier this morning, well, you're saying all the right things. You're saying, I said, it's so easy because I believe all those things. I lived all those things. Republican Kendall Qualls is a Medtronic executive who has told his compelling life story in TV ads, growing up partly in Harlem and partly in a trailer park in Oklahoma, then following his father's path into the U.S. Army, which led to education and success in the healthcare industry. But the neat thing about our country is where you start your life is not where you have to stay in life. And it, in all pathways, it starts with a, with a good education. And that's the journey I took. Qualls says he jumped into politics because he didn't like what he considered a narrative of despair coming from congressional Democrats. But also making sure that we back the police officers in their duties. Are there issues that we need to address? Yes. But those issues are not the overall narrative or the profile for the Minneapolis Police Department or for any police department from my perspective. Or just take it from Bert, the owner of Lion's Tap who said the heartbeat of America is small business. In his first term in Congress, Dean Phillips led the charge for a bipartisan bill that helped small businesses take advantage of the Paycheck Protection Program. It earned the Minnesota freshman an award from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Small businesses need support. Uh, if we don't keep the lights on, it's going to cost a lot of jobs, a lot of heartache, and a lot of li lost livelihoods. Phillips, the former head of Phillips Distilling and Talenti Gelato, launched his own small business in 2016. And two years later, he defeated longtime incumbent Congressman Eric Paulson. The people that I'm with here today don't hate police, don't hate law enforcement, they hate brutality. That's right. In June, he was moved to tears by people who've lost family members in police encounters. But he says it shouldn't be a choice between two sides. And I celebrate those who risk their lives every day for us in the spirit of protecting us. Uh, and I also celebrate those who are protesting generations of injustice. Unlike 2018, Dean Phillips isn't running a lot of TV ads this cycle. So far, he's relying on digital advertising and social media. For CARE 11 News, I'm John Croman. John, thanks. And we're highlighting other key congressional races today on each of our shows. We're collecting all of these profiles for you to view at care11.com slash voters toolkit or check them out on our YouTube page. How good is your signature? At 630, we introduce you to this guy who says his bad handwriting could have an impact on the election. Plus, myth-busting misconceptions about the flu shot. The five things you need to know about this year's flu shot. And the pandemic won't scare away this 100-year-old celebration. The steps Anoka is taking to keep its Halloween tradition alive. 